Hello, this is Walter Leite, and in this video, I'll demonstrate how to do variable ratio greedy matching with replacement using the matching package in R. Um, this example is part of chapter five of the book Practical Propensity Score Matching um, using R. Now, um, the example will be to estimate the effect of mothers having a job that provides a subsidized child care on the lift that they breastfeed their children. Um, this is part three of that example. Uh, I, this chapter demonstrates multiple matching methods, so this is one of them. Now, um, first thing, we'll load the data set that already has the professor scores on them, as well as um, a vector of covariate names, a vector of covariate names plus uh, missing indicators and the propensity score formula that was used to estimate propensity scores. Um, we'll perform matching using the library matching, which is um, one of the libraries available for propensity score matching in R. I'll load that. Now, this particular library requires that the treatment be a, a logical um, element. So I will convert the original data is in 0, 1 format binary. So I'll use if else to convert it to true or false. So that's what I do in this line here. Um, look at that. Now it's true or false. And um, to do the matching, I will use the match function within the matching package. Um, I declare here what the outcome is because this package, it's not only able to do the match, but also able to estimate the average treatment effect and the average treatment effect on the treatment for you. So it's a, it's a very uh, interesting package for that reason. Now, um, I provide here what the treatment is as well as what I want to match on which is the logit of the propensity scores. Um, I'm interested in estimating the ATT, the average treatment effect on the treated. The number of matches will be one, um, but I do want to perform variable ratio matching. So variable ratio matching is when for each treated, there is a variable number of controls, and that is obtained with this package with the option ties. So by saying here, ties equals true, I am specifying that if there are multiple matches to include all of them, right? Um, so it's, that's how you obtain one-to-many matching here with a variable number of matches. I'm using a caliper of 0.25 sun deviation, so that enforces common support. So the maximum allowed distance between um, treated and, and a match will be 0.25 sun deviations of the logit of the propensity score. And I'm also matching with replacement, which performs better than matching without replacement. So I will run here the match and covariate balance is the next step to see how successful a match was. Um, the function match balance is helpful for that. So I will, um, I'm providing the formula used to estimate professor scores. I'll show you what the formula is here. So you see this, it's used to, the, to, to declare which covariates you uh, calculate the covariate balance for. So these are my covariates. Um, the data set, this is the greedy matching two is the file I, I, the object where I stored the results of matching. Um, here, I don't want uh, the common or always mean of test to be used, and I don't want a paired sample state test to be used. Um, so if I run this, now the, this function actually prints to the screen, which is not particularly helpful because it's a very long printout. Show you what, how it looks like. Um, so it, print, it prints for, you can see like a very long printout 
for each covert name, like hours per week, it shows mean treatment before matching, after matching, mean control before matching, after matching, notes that became more similar. Then it shows the, the standardized mean difference here. Um, now this is times 100. Um, so this is 0 0.05. Um, and it shows the variance ratio as well, which is a helpful summary. We want this to be either between 0 0.5 and 1.5 or more conservatively, um, you could be 0 0.8 and 1.2. Now, um, I will, to, to extract the balance here, it's a little bit of work. Um, I have to use the, the, the function unlist to remove that part of the object, which is the after matching part. And I'm assigning it to this object here, balance greedy matching after. Um, the standardized mean differences, as I said, are multiplied by 100 here. Um, like this. Um, so I, but that's not the way that is typically reported on paper. So uh, I will divide by a hundred to, to be able to use, uh, um, get them in a format that's usually report on, reported on papers. Okay. And I get now that my maximum standardized mean difference was 0 0.17892. So if I'm using the what works clearinghouse um, of the US Department of Education as my criterion, they require either 0 0.05 with no additional adjustment of covariates or 0.25 with additional adjustment of covariates. And um, so if I'm using 0.25, this is okay. Um, now, another criterion um, is 0.1. For 0.1, I would have nine covariates that exceed that criterion. Now, I will, um, as I said before, the one advantage of the matching package is that it estimates the average treatment effect and average treatment effect on the treated for you. Um, so I just ask for a summary and it will have the treatment effect. So it shows here, this is the estimate of the treatment effect. Um, using, it uses the Abadie Ibis uh, estimator with the Abadie Ibis study errors. Uh, this is the t-statistic and the p-value. So uh, with this type of matching and this estimator, I found that there is a statistically significant effect of uh, average term effect on the treated of um, providing your subsidies in child care on the uh, duration of breastfeeding. Now, um, and it also gives me an interesting summary here, the number of treated observations, the match number of observations, but this is weighted, so it's always a weight for them to be the same. But because I asked for variable number of matches, the actual number of observations matched, was 385, but then they were weighted down to 107. Okay, and I used the caliper of 0.05. Now, if I had some problems with common support and some treated observations were dropped because they had zero control observations within their caliper, it would show here on number of observations dropped. I mean, I didn't have any drop. Now, one additional uh, part that's very important of the propensity score analysis is to do a sensitivity analysis to see how strong a confounder, a omitted confounder will have to be for my results to change. So here I've been using the library R bounds to run um, a sensitivity analysis using Rosenbaum's method with the Wilcox assign ranks test, which is a non-parametric test for um, based on ranks. So I'll load the library R bounds. And so here the main function is PSense and it connects well with the matching package. So I can provide the, the object of the matching package here. And gamma is my sensitivity parameter. So I want 
uh, gamma to go from one, which means no omitted variable bias, up to gamma of three increments of 0.1. So I'll run that. And here I have the results. Um, and so this is my value of gamma. And here, I these are p-values. Remember my original estimate was statistically significant. So these are p-values with the Coxo ranks test. This is my p-value, 0 0.0008. Um, now, we should look at how gamma, how high gamma has to be for the results to change to not significant. So here, with a gamma of 1.3, Um, it's already crossing into no significant area here, even though the lower bound is too significant. So I would say that this is um, very sensitive to, to omitted variable bias because gamma doesn't need to be very high for the lower bound, the upper bound, for the range here to get into no significant p-values. Now, if, if I had done these and the upper bound only became no significant, like let's say a two, I would be more confident of the, that, they are, and that the results would be not very sensitive to, to be the variable bias. But in this case, it's, it's sensitive. It's pretty sensitive. Okay, so that's how you do uh, matching using a matching package.